Hi, guys. Hi. Yeah, I'm Nick. Uh, I was a creative director on Spiritfarer, and I was uh, very happily uh, working with a, a whole team of really talented people, including first and foremost Joe, right here. Hi, Med kind of introduced me for me. So uh, I'm the art director. I've been with the Little Artist for since the beginning. Uh, yeah, Spiritfarer was a lot of fun to work on. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, a lot of stuff went into it, though. <laughs> I just noticed that I was muted for the entire intro. My bad. <laughs> As I was saying. Oh, so this was Med. This, is, this was Med, me. In case you don't know him. <laughs> well, that was a bit dumb on my part. I'm <laughs> very sorry. At least I noticed. Um, well, it starts out so strong. The intention was there, man. You had it. So, uh, yes, uh, as I was saying, I'm the community manager. I'll be the host for today. We are going to be talking about um, everything that went on in the designing portions of the game from the inception, where we discussed them about uh, everything that was Karen related up to where the game currently is. And uh, so, yeah, uh, as I was saying, Nick, Joe are here to join me to discuss this very topic. So uh, let's start by answering some of the questions that we receive over Discord or over... Yeah, that we had to skip yesterday, so... Yeah, essentially. I'm sorry for this, yeah. But uh, let's go ahead. So uh, we were discussing... Y'all were asking us uh, what was the meaning between each of the flowers and what, uh, and how were they associated with each spirit? And I'd like to hear you out on how we came about doing that. So yeah, Joe, actually, there's. Nick? I think yeah. even at the beginning, I, I, uh, it was it was it was Kai's work, right, Joe? I mean, you uh, when I ever arrived in the project, spirits were kind of already had that idea of being associated with with floral elements, right? Uh, when when you came onto the project, I was personally very sold onto the idea right. of having, uh, like double meaning and like symbolism for each spirit in terms of plants. So I kind of dumped it on you, and you were like. Okay, I, was like, yeah, I guess I'll works. do something with this. I was like, yes, plant symbolism and animal symbolism. <laughs> yeah, to me, it felt like it's funny you said that because I really thought it was because of the uh, all of Kai's work. Uh, Kai, by the way, was uh, our initial writer. Uh, he worked on uh, basically the foundations of what Spirit had to be. Uh, so he worked as a, as a writer back then. And uh, I think it was because of the asphodel fields. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Asphodel yeah. Meadows, which is a, a place in the uh, Greek underworld, and I think from in, it went from there, right? The, you had the Asphodel, and then the Asphodel were kind of declined into several uh, flower or fl floral elements for the spirits. Yeah, that's also kind of why where like the idea of having a star hat for Stella kind of came right. from, because Asphodels are very kind of star sh shaped, except there's six points to them instead of five. <laughs> But the, the 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 idea of the dead being uh, associated with uh, asphodel fields was very much into the inception of this, of Spirit Fair before it was called Spirit Fair. I didn't I didn't even know that the hat was was based on this. Wow, you you're, I've learned something today. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. That I just wonderful? take everything everyone does yeah. in terms of world building and I just cram it into my brain yeah. and try to make something out of it. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, at the beginning, so the, uh, the, the that concept was was pretty uh, important. And then for the spirits, um, uh, yeah, that's right. I took it along uh, for the ride, and then uh, each spirit's recreated. But basically, uh, as I said, uh, I think it was yesterday on another interview. But the um, everyone is always asking me, you know, but how how did the spirits, you know, went and did they go from the narrative, you know, concept and background to the visuals there? I said, no, no, no. It's the opposite. It's the other way around, actually. I kind of started with the visuals that inspired me to craft the spirits, and then it was back and forth until the very end. Um, and yeah, so we had that list. Remember the list of, sp yeah. of spirits we crafted? So we had, I don't remember how many uh, animals, but there was uh, very many of them. Uh, there was 30 at, at first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. didn't have the 30 list? M maybe. Yeah, yeah, 30 was the, yeah. the goal. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But we, did, we, yeah, did we go and uh, craft a 30 animals list? I don't think so. But anyway, it was a, a very you know high number of them. And um, yeah, the, so to 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 give you a basic idea, every spirit had a Greek name, a Greek mythological name, an animal, and a flower. So the flower symbolism uh, was to try to have 
archetypes. As we said yesterday, archetypes are the very basis of what we tried to do for spirits and, and, and characters in the game in general. So once we had that archetype, the, the floral symbolism, you know, um, was there to meant who they were and what they did. So that's why, for example, the first one being Gwen, she's got Nasphodel on her, and uh, that hence the very cool design uh, Joe made about the, the well, the six uh, very cool, you know, petal ears. ears. Yeah. Yeah, uh, symbolizing the petals on the Asphodel. Right. Which, which is in a sense, you know, how, how foundational Gwen was to me, because the deer spirit was the one that uh, actually incarnated the Greek underworld the most, because she was in, in charge of representing that whole world to Stella, hence the actual tutorial edition that she had throughout the game. Um, but yeah, we had tons of different uh, flowers. I don't, I don't remember all of them. Um, I uh, talked about... I, I still have the list uh, yeah. nearby. I, I said yesterday, Oxide Daisy for, for Summer. Uh, which symbolized uh, peace and inner peace. Um, the floral symbolism is is fascinating. You have tons of way to interpret those. And um, yeah, yeah. I have borage flower for uh, star flower for Giovanni as well. Yeah, and I think uh, Astrid was the Malva. It was yeah. a it was a, a flower. I need to Google it because I don't remember what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it's a That's Malva. Funny. Yeah, uh, it's a very pink flower. It's a it's a very small flower, which is funny because they grow in bunches, so it, it made sense to me that Astrid had to have something that was stronger together as like a bunch of flowers, which is yeah. very much how she is. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, otherwise there was, um, uh, yeah, I know Gust Gustav is, uh, is the red poppy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, a tool was the white lily. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to actually pinpoint the, the reason why these spirits uh, are represented by which animal. Uh, as I said, it came from, from the very cool drawings you, you had at first, which was, oh, there was that owl spirit, that what we call the tall owl, because we had two owls. Uh, the tall owl that, that Gustav was. Actually, people will soon meet Beverly, the second owl, uh, which we affectionately call the tiny owl. Uh, <laughs> And she's been there for a while, and she she was, we tried really uh, hard to to incorporate her. So I'm really happy it's happening actually. She was actually so. created at the same time as Gustav, as right. a technically as a second design for Gustav, but we liked her and we liked how tiny she was, so we ended up keeping her. <laughs> yeah, and I need to admit that it's entirely your fault. Your drawings are cool. <laughs> you just want to use them all. I mean, really, it's like it's like it's, I, I've made all that, and they're all five versions of the spirits, and we have to pick one. No, we'll pick them all. They're all, them they're all so cool. Good. <laughs> there, there's still sense. like I think in the the art book, there's still like six other owl designs that we didn't go with because they were too similar. But yeah, we right. can't have just like a whole boat of owls. <laughs> that is yeah. fair. It would be That's funny, right. but unfortunately, might it be confusing. Really... After yeah, a while, exactly. <laughs> but fortunately, yeah. a lot of people will get to meet Beverly around summertime at some point when the next update will come out. Yeah, to... actually, absolutely, and uh, even Jackie and, and, and Daria as well. Uh, we announced them uh, a while back, and uh, they're going to be pretty cool to explore as well. Uh, as far as really spirits that we get, actually, yeah. We didn't really draw that many spirits that we that we cut though. I remember I, uh, from the list, I remember the two ones that I liked the most because I, uh, it was a question that was asked to us, like which spirits uh, were actually cut from the final roster, and I don't remember all of them, but there were three that I remember. There was one called Rodney. Rodney was a, a beetle. Um, yeah, he was in my yeah. list. He had a name. I yeah, never heard. I, I never had knew. Rodney. Yeah, I Rodney. Didn't I didn't know that either. Yeah. Anyway, so Rodney was a beetle, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we barely had a concept. One of your very first uh, initial concepts for the game had kind of a, uh, an insectoid uh, spirit. Yeah, it was an alien. Like he, he was kind of a stitch-looking like beetle thing. Right, right. That's true. Uh, so Rodney was something. I remember thinking about the spirit that was really, really old and really, really, you know, walking very frailly, like with a cane, and so couldn't we talk. Um, but that, actually, we took back that concept a bit to 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 illustrate more of Francis, the affectionately um, called the Onion Monkey. Yeah, uh, the, wonder, the wandering merchant. People will know him by this uh, moniker. But uh, yeah, I remember the the other two ones that I remember fondly that never actually existed. There was a a, a splendid unicorn called Freddy. Uh, yes, yes, unicorn. I really really liked to have. Freddy. There was a rhino also. 
right? Yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> the yes. bodybuilder yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. Damn. And he was meant I to be. I miss him. I'm really sad we didn't get to, to, to add him. I know. And the archetype was that very buff guy who is actually extremely gentle and really sweet. Um, because there was a patient that I met uh, in Quebec, actually, uh, who was in an end of life care, who was that kind of guy. And he continued uh, pumping iron until the very end. And oh. he even got a, yeah, it's funny because the, that guy actually had a, had a tattoo made by the artist that tattooed me. And uh, he, he had the most intense tat all over his body, like really, really cool tat. And he made that, I think, uh, four or six months prior to his death. It was an awesome dude. He was a really awesome dude. And uh, so, yeah, the, 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 the rhino was a bit based on him and on uh, Terry Crews as well. <laughs> Remember we had that archetype of yeah. Terry Crews? Like that guy who was like, mm, and then... Uh, I, <laughs> Aww. And yeah. I do remember we him. actually have like concept art of these somewhere at, no. at all? No, that's what I figured. No, those didn't the make rhino. it past the, yeah. the concept stage, okay. the, the ideation stage. Uh, there was, uh, however, a couple other designs that we never made like did anything with like there was um praying mantis that was uh fall yes. themed uh that we never did anything with That's there right. was uh there was more alien things uh that i made right as uh, as we got out of sundered uh so i was still very much like basking in the eldritch ore so i was just like <laughs> creating things trying to get back into the mood of not not sundered not <laughs> basically sundered. So a lot of the first iterations are like weird multi-eyed monsters <laughs> yeah. that did not end up being in the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fine. So uh, why not just start by uh, going over what Charon and all of the start of the beginning, like all of the mythology um, aspect came from the game. Let's, let's just try and see uh, what you guys have to like mention. Right. Like, how did it come about? Like, yeah, it's yeah, actually, that that's true. I mean, the the uh, I think it's an interesting topic because uh, to us it meant uh, how much we uh, try to to have mythological elements in it from the beginning, and then we kind of drifted off a bit from the concept, but it was pretty much in, in everything we did, uh, actually at the very inception of them all. Um, as a reminder, you know, the, the, the very initial concept of Spirit for the one that Will carried and you guys when I when I joined the company, um, it was really that 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 contrast between Charon as a as a dark grim figure and the, a much more visual bubbly world that came up to be what you what you made with the Joe, which was, which was absolutely awesome. And uh, so all the mythological elements were there to inspire, uh, at the very least me, and then it, it basically, you know, uh, bled out the whole team to just take all those elements and make them real. Uh, Karen, we kind of drew... I remember Karen, we did that quite late, though. I mean, it, we knew oh, it, it was, was there. The I think I designed Karen, like, last year. Yeah, it was kind of kind of like I think it was like probably about a year and a half ago yeah. maybe. He That's was right. in sketches at the very least uh, somewhat animated while we were working on the demo in like 2019, like near September. I do remember yeah. that. But uh yeah, for the final version it took way longer. No, no, I mean like the initial design cuz when right. you saw him uh in sketches in animation, he he was he had just been designed oh okay, okay. like there was no buffer between me finishing True. designing him and all oh, right we need to start animating him oh, yesterday I, yeah <laughs> that is That's true right. but the re i guess the reason why uh it happened so late was because it was a it was kind of um how to say that it was not a question uh for me actually karen had to be there in the beginning of the game I and mean, karen had to be the one that actually handed off the everlight to still so other all that you know principle of, of how to start off the game and how to transition from the actual mythological element to start with him and yeah. then he was the last uh, from a metaphorical perspective i mean he's the uh, the spirit first world before stella is pretty much you know sticks and acheron and it's that the greek underworld and then she takes on and she makes that world evolve beyond that that initial construct to be something that is her round rather than, than that world so that's why yeah. it didn't, was a non-issue to me i knew karen had to be there yeah uh, there, there was also like talks at the beginning uh, about like uh you know how like the world is a spoilers representation of 
<laughs> Stella's uh, like own like vision yeah. of everything that's happening, basically. Which is something we'll talk about in details tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow but what I mean is like Karen yeah. was initially supposed to like we were we were initially supposed to see his boat and like initially yeah, supposed to true. see how he had shaped the world like before Stella. That's right. We ended up not using that, but like it's a it's interesting to know that the spirit fair that is currently in charge of uh, ferrying spirits is the one who shapes the world and makes it look like it looks basically so it, it wouldn't be like a a stretch to say that everything that we've done in spirit fair is according to stella's vision oh well, yeah absolutely but it's 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 a uh, um to go towards the the theme of the day it, it's it's still um well to me it is the concept that stella envisions her own version of the Greek underworld. Like it's a, it's still somehow for her, the Greek underworld, because that's what she knows. Uh, I think something we, we, uh, we never say, but it always, you know, uh, was there in the back of my mind, the fact that her father was a scholar in Greek mythology. So that's why I, I think probably Joe, you're the only one who knows this, but because of this, she was pretty much from her uh, very childhood influenced by the Greek mythology, Greek mythos in general. And uh, that's why she sees that Greek underworld as, as where she is now. Uh, that's mm -hmm. because of that connection to what her father taught her and that she what she integrated when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, yeah, it's 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 really uh, it's really there. It's hard to see. It's the same goes for uh, all the objects we create to have some kind of a, of a world structure, uh, because at some point in the development of the game, uh, we try to find a justification for this all. Uh, we knew it was somehow metaphorical, yet we needed to have some uh, justification for this, some explanation to what, why things were the way they were. So if we go into the next uh, concept, you'll see that uh, we worked, well, Joe worked on something that we affectionately called the, um, what was the word we used? The guardian object? Uh, uh, they were the permanent objects, basically. Permanent the... objects, that's yeah. right. They're just yeah. like whatever remains in the like as a basic structure of the world depend like no matter who is the, the spirit fair like those are the central points at, around which like the memories are formed basically yeah. and you can visit that's right it's it was meant to be uh objects that were uh kind of the backbone of the world like if you if you strip off everything that's in the world that's the only thing that remains and it, it was also meant to be uh structures that we know were kind of uh not milestone, but thresholds in the world. That's why uh, the Everdoor is kind of also made this way. You had the little buoys around the, the islands, which were absolutely useless, by the way. No one understands what this is in the game. Uh, sorry, guys, but it, it's true. I mean, something we tried really hard to understand how it worked, and those it kind of did. Sorry? I said those things. <laughs> that was just yeah, so interesting. Things, the, the yeah. pillars of light. Yeah. Uh, but they're made uh, with the same kind of material. Uh, which in turn uh, is going to be there during uh, the little sequences where you get to meet Hades and talk to him uh, about what's going on with you, Stella. Uh, yeah, the they're made of the same material as the Everlight. That's why the Everlight re reacts to them, basically. Exactly. There's a whole there is a whole lot of of, of world building behind those elements. The fact that. In truth, the Everlight is the actual physical device that can take any form of shape. It's also the symbol of light that we use. I mean, we had tons of symbolism uh, going across. Uh, again, all stem from from um, Greek mythology and the concept of the lamp being something you carry that is an object that specifically or um, technically lights the way, which West Stella does. Something that actually we dropped uh, along the game. Remember at the beginning of the first uh, demos, we had Stella at the bow of the ship um, lighting the way in front of the yeah. ship so you had to to light the place and you had to use this to, to dispel tons of, of uh, various elements um, yeah i think she did that at night to guide the boat especially like yeah. to make I, I think we actually used that me mechanic as a way to speed up the boat so she would go yes. at the, uh, at the uh, tip of the ship and basically like hold out the everlight and time would go that's by what faster we did. that's what we did uh, it didn't really work uh, in nope, the end, so we have to work. morph that into something different. Uh, for you guys who have played the game, the uh, the uh, well, I don't know how many of you have actually collected the the all the uh, uh, figureheads in, in on the ship because the last one is pretty hard to get. Um, 
those are the things the things now that actually increase the boats. Uh, so they also do it for you instead of you having to like mechanically yeah, go there ahead. and like, yeah. all right, now go faster, and I can't do anything yeah. while I'm speeding up the boat. Yeah, that was that was a cool idea, and visually it was really nice. But gameplay wise, it was a kind of a sucky idea because it didn't really work really well. It, it halted the pace of whatever yeah. you were doing, basically. That's right. It wasn't that great, but it was a an, an awesome idea. And anyway, the the the, the Everlight being um, a limp, basically. Uh, is still pretty much there, and that's why we add still all the mechanics to do this. Um, I don't know if you people have noticed that the in the shrine, uh, because Joe, you made an awesome uh, concept of it. But the shrine has a has a half half sphere, and when you place two two obols in those, the sphere becomes whole again, mm -hmm. which is another symbolism of the Everlight by itself. So it's like you basically use the Everlight to activate things in the world that are uh, there because they're waiting for you, basically, mm -hmm. uh, which which shows, you know, progression and how still actually accomplishes to fill up that void that that world is by basically accomplishing things. It's all metaphorical again. I mean, you go to the to the shrines to to place spirits obols in them and then you gain things from them. It's not meant to to, you know, to feed the concept of being taught by spirits and the spirits help you move on yourself. You know? Yeah, speaking Which... of like symbolism actually like you touched on the shrine being like a half circle and becoming a full circle um but like that thing happens in a, like that there's a reason for that is that there's every circle is first always a half circle if you look at the around the shrine there's a half circle which is meant to represent basically the ever door and yes. The Everdor, when you get to it at first, is only a half circle. It's only when you help someone pass on that it becomes a full circle, and that's why it starts out as being a bowl and ends up a circle. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, it's 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 not meant to mean something. That's I don't know if uh, probably many people have, have noticed it, but there there isn't one piece of thing in Spirit that that isn't meant to be uh, there for a reason. I remember seeing this a lot of time on the on the, on the devs and, and Joe as well, and saying that to people, but everything has to be there for a reason. We can just like create things because we think it's cool. <laughs> they have to 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 mean something uh, for us, for for the still story, for 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 what's going on with the uh, with the principles of the game. Yeah, and the I, goal was to have everything justified, but not necessarily be justified in game. Like as long as you know why why it's there for, and that it has a, a purpose, you don't need to like go over the top and explain everything basically yeah yeah uh back to the topic of mythology it's fun it's it's a bit of a fun fact but i was uh, fortunate enough to have a conversation with uh with greg Cassavin from super giant before before christmas and i told him that we we're extremely lucky because hey this is an, is an awesome game it's a wonderful game that everyone knows and uh in it you find tons of mythological characters who pretty you know logically have their mythological names and I told him we were pretty lucky because every spirit in spirit for every entity had a mythological name as well. Uh, Electo, for example, uh, is in Hades one of the one of the Furies, one of the three bosses you find. You know, there is Megara, Electo, and Tisiphon, I believe, uh, which also a name that we had in spirit first. So Gustav was called Electo at first. So you would have that weird mismatch of, of playing Hades and wait, 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 Electo is not a big owl guy or the other way around. Then you play Spirit for at some point after having played Hades and say, wait, 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 uh, that owl is a, is a boss fight. I don't get it. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's actually really interesting. And we change it again through that concept of morphing what mythology meant for us to become what mythology meant for Stella. That's, that's really a journey that we had throughout the game development. Uh, and that's why, as you can see, uh, we started by I started by mapping all the actual Greek underworld. So you have the Blessed Isles in the center. Uh, you had the Asphodel Meadows. It's just the Blessed. It's, it's funny actually. I don't know if you guys know about this, but the Blessed Isles uh, are the the physical place where you go when your life was a plus perfect. Like you lived you lived a perfect life, which actually perfect life means you live your life in perfect accordance to what the gods uh, you know expect from you. Which might not be a perfect life. You know, it's a perf it's a life of devotion more than anything. But uh, yeah, and if you are kind of normal but cool, you go to the Asphodel Fields. That's where you end up, you know, living the rest of your eternity. And if you're anything below this, which is a huge number of people, you go into any of the other very, very, very terrible place, like the Styx, the Acheron, the Phlegeton, and the Lethe. It's, it's, those are not cool places. It's literally hell. Um, the Phlegeton is the river of fire where you get to get burned for eternity by, by nasty monsters and entities. 
so not cool. Uh, the Acheron is the eyes. The the Lethe is the river of, of forgetfulness. So you kind of go there, and then nothing makes sense anymore. You forget about everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that being said, that concept still, um, uh, in a way, you know, uh, dictated what we did with Predator as well. It's something we uh, managed to create, but we had to change the the words layout a bit. But uh, Jerry, you remember the first uh, concept that we had, which was a circle, 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 and then from in the center, everything was nice and perfect. And people who lived there were in perfect, you know, uh, acceptance of their fate, and they were ready to pass on everything. And then the further you went, the least people were okay with them being dead and had to be ferried, you know, uh, towards. That, their that's end of also life. where the like the the individual spirit uneasiness with their form kind of came into the into the picture because like the the number ones who were completely comfortable with how they were represented in terms of animal form and everything were in the middle but as uh, like as you spread out that you would get like the two and the threes who were just like no i don't want to do anything like i'm i'm not dead com in complete denial all the time yeah absolutely that's entirely this and uh it's fun because in, in retrospect um i think that concept was cool but it didn't really stand the test of, of dev that much because, the, actually, I'm sorry about this, but that's why you meet uh, characters which are um, a bit unsavory towards the end of the game because we kind of carried on that idea of the further you go, the harder the spirit are, you know, the, the, the tougher they are in their mind, the, the nastier they get towards Stella. Uh, that's why you get Elena by the end. That's why you get Bruce and Mickey, which are really not, uh, well, they're cool, but in their own way. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's why the, the the nicer spirits are at the beginning and the tougher spirits are uh, uh, around the end. Except that our map is more a rectangle than it is a square, so it didn't work that well. And for in for just like uh, you know how the boat moved around, it was, wasn't really um, a success. So that that was one of the things I would change if I had to remake Spirit for that. I would balance spirits a bit more rather than having like very nice people at the beginning and, and tough people towards the end. But it was there for a reason, which is this, which was the fact that uh, the Greek underworld is exactly balanced this way. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's our tribute to uh, to mythological components there. Actually, I think we have we have very cool concept of you uh, trying this, but I think we, the first concept mm -hmm. that you, that you, that you had uh, were concept of the places more of the center of the world rather than the periphery. Yeah, uh, well, the thing is that we didn't go to the, the periphery very, like, early on, because we know we didn't want the, the outside area to be, like, categorically bad, just uneasy. And we wanted to focus in the middle, because that's where people are going to spend most of the time anyway. Yeah. I think the three, the three uh, initial concepts I did were for the middle. Or maybe, like, area two around it, but... Yeah, yeah, that's funny because I, I remember like when you when you when you when you're saying this, it it reminds me the question you asked me. Actually, people, you have to know that that all the best questions come from Joe, and she's the <laughs> one who actually powers the whole game dev because she asked the question that is the most important one. I was like, oh well, yeah, that's actually the thing that this actually matters now. And the question was like, yeah, but what's what's the best place? What's what does it look like? Like, how can you imagine a place that you really like and this that is not like completely cliche or, or stereotypical? Uh, so that's why we actually, so Joe, jo, you asked me that question and I came back with a couple of choices. Uh, so those are the places that might work and I think it started to make sense with Stella story as well. We'll talk about this in detail tomorrow. But the uh, top of my head, the thing that I liked that you didn't like was the, uh, you know, kind of, it was a bit cliche, but the, the islands in the tropical islands in the ocean, like a, basically like a Hawaii inspired, like, a, you know, a sandy beaches and, and umbrella, not umbrellas, but, you know, a, um, little pagodas, that's the right word, but little houses, little huts on the, on the beach. You're like, no, that's such a cliche. And, and you really don't like the heat either. I hate, I hate the, the heat, but yeah. I think the, like when I asked you that question, it, spurred on like the the discussion of like is it is it a good place like what is a good place quote unquote good yeah uh universally and nothing is universally which is which was the point when i think you came up with the idea of like no this is all according to stella so what is the best place for stella well probably the place she grew up in probably the place she has the best memories in and doesn't need to be like the cliche uh I'm, I want to go on vacation and like uh, 
in Hawaii or whatever, like the idyllic places, it's just like what place means the most to her. Well, that's the best place. Yeah, that's right. That, that's and it doesn't can. have to be universal. Like people may not like this place, but for her, it is the best. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's why we kind of we kind of broke the link between, let's say, the Blessed Isles and all the, uh, you know, uh, Eastern North France inspired places that is the Hummingbird and all that. Uh, that's true because then it became uh, Stella Story. Uh, still, you know, with the, um, the um, basically, yeah, that's why we had also the, the what we call the sea region that no one knows what we're talking about right now, but the, the <laughs> Oxbury Oxbury region, which is right. Montreal. Sorry, guys, it is Montreal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Montreal, uh, New York. Yeah, it is that 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 eastern uh, coast city that that is where Stella lives. You know, highs and down, highs and lows, and that's where she she lives her her uh, adult life. Whereas the two other before, so Hummingbird, which is more like uh, Alsace in France, the northern, uh, eastern, uh, yeah, northeastern region in France. And there is the trip she makes to Japan to go to actually visit um, the, uh, what was the name actually? Uh, the, uh, uh, the the Japanese village that we took as inspiration. Uh, sorry. The oh, uh, it's, uh, Shirakawago. Yeah. Shirakawago. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is an awesome uh, medieval uh, Japanese village hamlet, actually, in the mountains. Sur surrounded by mountains. Yeah. It's in the middle, in the valley, but surrounded by mountains. Absolutely, yeah. It's gorgeous. It is. I really wish we could go there someday. <laughs> that would <Yeah>. be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved to be able to go there. <laughs> Me too. We should plan that trip somehow. Well, when COVID is over, Yeah, maybe when we were just... allowed to do anything, maybe. Yeah. Let's just go visit all of the places that we that we used as inspiration. Might as well. Like uh, I do believe that um, the Everdor was also um, inspired by some place. I believe in Germany was it or was it? Yeah, it's the Devil Bridge. Uh, yeah. I can't pronounce the name because I'm not German. I'm gonna butcher it. But That's it's fair. you. You can just Google G Devil's Bridge Germany. You'll find find it. Uh, it it was actually because it was. Uh, like I had, I had taken a couple of like screenshots of like memorable places, and I had them in my folder for a while, and those automatically just like went into my uh, my uh, lock screen on my computer at work. <laughs> and when I came back one day, I was like, "Holy shit! I forgot I put that in there." <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I was like, "This is gorgeous!" And like, we need to make like do something just something with that idea of a full circle being like a portal to another world basically because that's what it looks like and it, it inspires like fantasy it inspires like the the, the, the mind yeah. like that that made me dream i was like i want to go there i know that now right. that bridge is actually a lot like closed off to, to visitors because it's too uh, rickety basically you're, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna fall off and it might break so they're they just closed it off but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people who still try to go <laughs> <laughs> with with good yeah. intention, I would believe to uh, the very know. least look. Well, <laughs> I didn't <true>. ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be hard to actually go there and ask in this situation. Yeah. But yes, you're you're right. Hey, I'm wondering, Joe, did we have the concept of reflection on what a reflection before the portal? Before the the, the actual? No, it was, no. The, the, I, I the portal the portal informed all of that. Uh, yeah, the portal right. was one of the first designs i did after like we did the the initial transition from train to boat oh, uh, the right. portal was the first thing i did um yeah. because william william wanted to see it <laughs> he was like william, I, william yeah. wanted specifically to see it. He, william <laughs> he was like i i need to vis yeah. like visualize it i was like okay i'm on it so i i, I did a couple sketches and that's when we we got the the four uh concepts of the of the Everdor, basically, and then that's when we have the discussion of like, how are we doing this? And then afterwards, like, because I had the idea of the reflection doing a full circle, uh, that's when the idea of having stuff happen in the reflections, like for uh, to Stella and to the the spirits and everything. That's when it came in because we wanted to use the reflection even more. It didn't end up working out because it's a little too subtle for a game. It's not. It's not interactive enough and it's hard to understand it, like we would basically need a movie medium to 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 be able to explain that correctly and have the right pacing but the idea was there 
Right. Yeah, and it was uh, to me. To me, it was also important to to get there the uh, because it it happens to be true as well in the on the sticks because in in the river you see the 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 last souls of the of the mains the M A N E S the you know the the Greek concept of of you've not gone through the river by Charon's means so you have not paid your duty as a noble so you cannot yeah. really pass through so you have to go into it and then that's where you become something that will air forever in the underworld. Also a very nice concept, by the way. If you don't have money, you cannot go into whatever hell you're directed to be. <laughs> so I don't know, that's, that's right, actually. Is it, is it worth to go and be tortured forever in, in Burning Flames because you paid your, 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 your entry fee? Or is it better to just, like, you know, be there and chill in air and be no one until until the end of the... I think the concept is, like, if you don't pay your the, the, the fee, like, you're in limbo, basically, and that's not... Yeah. Exactly pr pleasant, so I'm I'm guessing it's not a plus. <laughs> well, I'm guessing you want the obol, but that uh, is fair. But if you're doomed to eternal damnation in hell, like better, I don't know, better pretend you lost your obol. Yeah, might as well, you know. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I lost it. Yeah. Uh, some people were uh, actually asking because you uh, did mention trains uh, yes. instead of boats, so. Walk me through the process of why we actually chose to go for a boat rather than train, if you that, would. That was pre-Nico's time. So that that was actually because entirely because of um, Spirited Away and the right. tracks on the on, on the ocean. That was a, 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 a site that we wanted to reproduce. Uh, not like we do we, we just like the idea of a train running on water where it's not supposed to be <laughs> and where you wouldn't expect it to be. And actually that was, um, like we, we, we tried very hard to make it work, uh, with a train. Uh, the problem was that it, it's a side scroller. So obviously there's no depth, uh, but the, the train would end up very long horizontally instead of vertically. Uh, and that was really a pain to navigate because you would have to like run forever to get to like whatever house you wanted and a, a, a train built uh, vertically looked worse than a boat so we, we kind of just like went okay well if you if you want to build like vertically it would look better on a boat and also one of the things that um, weighed heavily on that decision was the sounds um the sounds of a train are very nice, but if you have to hear them for 30 hours without ever stopping, you're going right. to go insane. And like trains are loud. And even if we tried to muffle it, it was just like constantly grating. So we, we chose basically something that inspired calm um, constantly, which was the ocean, like crashing waves on a boat, the boat cracking, like the wood um like seagulls flying by that's fine wind stuff like that um i think that the fact that the boat also inspired inspires like a, a slower uh navigation helps with the, the 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 calm mood of the whole thing i think the the visually the 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 spirit train is still very strong but i think the boat serves uh, the purpose that we we intended for it better that makes a lot of sense yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Wait, it was a very good decision, by the way. <laughs> yes. Also, the <laughs> boat was supposed to fly at some point. Oh, right. True. Yeah. yeah. I want to break it to everybody that it's not going to happen. But the reason we went for a boat at, at first, my condition was it needs to fly. And we <laughs> never ended up being able to do it. It was planned, though, but we had to. We had to we just we, it also had to go underwater, it. and we couldn't do it either. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it had so many concepts at first. It had to be, also, we, we had planned a, a giant grotto, kind of kind of cave place, you know, where you had a, a background, but having the boat, you know, going going through an, a, a very vast number of positions. It's something that actually uh, um, we've spent a, a lot of time trying to nail, the, the concept of the boat floating, which leads back to the first, uh, you know, uh, one of the first concepts we showed today about the, the buoys around the islands. And it stems from the very, well, now it seems unwarranted, but back then we were extremely scared by the fact that no one would understand that the boat would go from always from left to right and still change direction from a top view. So you would still go south and east and northwest. But when you look at the boat, it still goes from left to right. So you're like, how does that thing work? 
and we couldn't have the boat because of a concept of what's going on behind the behind the boat. Uh, so you can see that there is a far background that you can see with the island. So when you go across an island, see the island basically drifting off the horizon like this, and it works. Uh, but when you're close to an to an island, you cannot really uh, conceptually, you could have a boat that can stay close to an island and let's say turn around the island. And then your background would always be the island behind you. That's something we absolutely couldn't make in the game. It was absolutely impossible to craft this. So we had to have that idea of, hey, let's have that kind of, you know, you have to uh, anchor your ship around uh, those, those pillars of light. That means that then your uh, tiny tender ship, your tiny boat that you get off the big boat goes towards that island directionally, um, which actually was absolutely unnecessary. You can we can have done that without it. People will say, "Okay, it's an island," and then I can go down and I get right on the <laughs> island. It would have worked. We for almost us, complicated a lot oh, yeah, of decision, yeah. but because mentally it was input, it was impossible for us to wrap around around. Have people would be so much confused by the fact that you have that boat and then you have that earl and then how did you need to load the place? Oh man. It was such an ordeal. Uh, we, we, yeah. That's why we, we overthought like, a lot of things, but I think it was worth it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it worked. And uh, funny enough, I remember the first playtest we had. Uh, they were in uh, like maybe a year and a half after development, and that was my biggest question: Will people understand what's going on with that boat? And then you choose on the map where you go, and then you go from left to right all the time. Uh, and no one cared. Not one single person mentioned it. Like, no one actually even noticed yeah, that, no that was a thing? Yeah, no one noticed. Everyone was just like, yes, the boat goes left to right, that's it. It, it just yeah. is <laughs> a concept that just works. Why would we question it kind of deal? Which yeah, was yeah. funny. But... It's the power of, of conventions, you know. It's uh, Actually, maybe if we had uh, known that in hindsight, uh, I don't think it would have changed our perception of trying to, to insert meaning into everything we did. Uh, but still, it was like, as Joe said, I think it's, it's, it's our way to operate. It's, I think as a studio, as a team, we will never be able to, to completely get rid of all those, you know, uh, worries and, and, and overthinking on things and say, how can that thing work? And how does that make sense within the whole world? I know I won't. Uh, probably, Joe, I'm joking for you, but I think you can't. So no, it's I about, can't. yeah, it's, it's not it's, in it's... my nature to let things go. Exactly. So <laughs> probably many other games we make will overcompensate to think about stuff that the one was, oh, that was a thing. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think it's our job to overthink things at this yeah, point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but it's, it's a quest for meaning that is important to us. I mean, it's important to us. And I think in a way it shows. I mean, it's uh, even if something we go overboard and we over, uh, you know, think about stuff, um, I'm pretty sure that people will feel that the game has elements in it that, that means that mean more than what they can actually see. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's palpable. That is totally fire. And yeah. um, let's transition to uh, what real world places were inspired to build each sections of the game, because that's something that I know a lot of people were interested in. So I figured we could just like go about uh, discussing like specific sections. So like the game is built off of multiple regions. So I know that uh, Shirakawa Go was the inspiration for uh, Japan. Yeah, what about for, uh, in the game is uh, Furugawa. Furugawa, right. Yeah. Which is, by the way, an, uh, an English word. Because of, uh, at, the, at first, every place meant to be some kind of weird uh, mix between an actual naming ish in a language and an animal. And hence, Oxbury and Krausen and, and Furugawa and, and Hummingberg. Uh, and they were all like weird, you know, mashup of, of concepts. Um, but yeah, as we said a bit earlier uh, today, uh, it came from the idea of uh, trying to map places from uh, the nicest to the least nice, uh, but all based on Stella's story and, 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 and tracks in her life. Um, so Hummingberg uh, is heavily inspired by, well, first Colmar in Alsace. Then we also had concepts from places in, uh, in, 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 in Alps as well. We always use Tyrol as an example, but we never kind of used it in the game. But we had all very cool inspirations from, from Austria and, and, and Alpine settings, which ended up being, as I said yesterday, Villa Maggiore is the actual place in the in Spiritfarer, which is both existing in Spiritfarer's real world and spirit for metaphorical worlds of the underworld. Uh, Villa Maggiore is meant to be uh, taken from the, the Great Lakes in Italy. Uh, so the, the, the Lake uh, Lago Maggiore and the, all the lakes around, which is, are an awesome place. Um, 
So for 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 that region, which we call the first region, uh, hummingbird is that concept uh, to evocate places from, let's say, in a general area, nor east, northeastern France, uh, southern Germany, and Alps in general. That was a concept. That concept you're showing now, we never used. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah that that was the most uh, like. It, it was weird because it was supposed to be very inspired. Well, not supposed. It was inspired by the Alps more, but it was also meant to be like more of a like Canadian log cabin kind of feeling. Yes. So it was a mix of both, and it's supposed to be at the base of mountains, but it it yeah. got asked axed pretty pretty fast. But that, that that concept existed when we had eight different regions conceptually yeah we didn't we didn't make concepts for all of them but we had way more regions than the four we ended up setting uh our the game into um yeah the the, the whole japanese uh shurikawa go region uh, still is there pretty much um I think it, it's the it, only one that is still there in like three islands isn't it yeah that's right yeah. The old you have, you have it, you have it with the owls is spread throughout that region quite a bit, indeed. Yeah. Well, you have. It was a. Uh, at first, what we tried to do was to have one big island with many facets right. to the island. That's why we had rice fields, and that's why we had. But that's why we had a, a volcano in the background, which meant to evocate Japan as well. Uh, so you had that concept of very high, um, very nice-looking mountains with rice fields um, into them. Uh, Joe, you worked a lot on, on rice fields and tried to, to have that feeling of, of, you know, stepped mountain, so mountains sculpted by by yeah. the by by mankind. It, it was a really cool visual uh, setting, and it it, it worked right away because uh, um, it worked with Sela's life. Actually, the third region uh, it was actually the, uh, the in the second phase of us developing places because those two ones were. At, Quite, a, quite early in the game, and then we took some more time to develop the rest. Uh, the rest being in the game the, uh, the the Oxbury region, so the region behind the rock, and then Krausen region, which is the two part pieces of, of the world, which is behind the mist. Um, so for, for uh, Oxbury, uh, pretty easily it came to us that it had to be uh, Montreal, well where we live, um, to to make sure that it felt natural. I mean, it was again, Spirit is kind of our story in general. I mean, yeah. Most of the spreads in the game are inspired by people we knew in real life, so we wanted to make sure that it worked for us and try to, to see ourselves as kind of a, uh, in a way we are all little Stellas in the game. Uh, but truthfully, it was meant to be something that was for us both kind of ugly and kind of good looking. And it was the concept of it's it's both really nice and visually speaking, it's not. I mean, it's not extremely graphically beautiful. It's it has a it's as Tons of soul for us, at least. It feels like the place we would like to continue living in. Uh, so I think I think Oxbury in in particular is supposed to be like a yes, it is a representation of Montreal, but it's also like a it's an homage to like the 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 busy cities that still manage to have a community that still manage to have like you know talking to like you you can still talk to people on the street, you can still talk to like your neighbor, you still know some people. Because it, what matters in a city is the is the people you know and like how you interact with the world. So that's why like we didn't want to make Oxbury a like a negative uh, a space to be in, because it was meant to be like a well the city is what you make of it really. It's where you live. It's who you know. So it was meant to be very positive still while still being a little bit oppressive because it is, it is very busy and it's still overwhelming because there's a lot of people. <laughs> And I think yeah. that's um, that's a lot of what went into creating it. Actually, uh, Marie Marie Christine is the one who did the the concepts for it. We don't have it right now, I don't think. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of research that went into making sure that it didn't feel only oppressive and like only like it. We we didn't want to make the 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 comment of like nature is good and like human and like city bad because we we thought that was a little too binary and not subtle and not very accurate either because <laughs> we all live in cities and like <laughs> <laughs> that is true it's fine That's it's right. good That's right. if anything we almost went the opposite direction with crow's end by saying like everything is a lot more oppressive even though it is in nature yeah but the, the, that's also like the crow's end is also oppressive by how 
tall the cliffs are and how dangerous they feel. <laughs> that is fair. Yeah, that's also, there's a cult there, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah, weird place to be. <laughs> yeah, there, there are some industrial remnants. It's fun because uh, from a, I don't want to spoil too much because I know we're gonna see, we 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 had promised that the spoilers were all for for tomorrow and not for today, but something happens in Stella's life that dictates why Krasan is is a place that doesn't feel good for her. Um, but from the inspiration, yeah, it, it was meant to be something that is oppressive, yet at the same time not entirely uh, ridiculously uh, stereotypically oppressive. Um, for myself, I can know that I can say that the, the uh, um, I'm a big fan of, of of David Lynch's work, and and in you have that forest in Twin Peaks, which is really oppressive but beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's both ancestral and and gloomy. Um, you also have parts of of uh, Krausen that feel like, uh, for those of you who are uh, old enough, in the Blair Witch Project, and when the, when it came out, the concept that yeah, I'm lost in the woods and the woods is a scary place. But it's more going back also to a to a childish fear of being alone in a place that isn't foreign to you. Yeah, being uh, lost in the forest is scary. It is scary. I I, I think for us uh, Quebecers, we feel that forests can be an awesome and a scary place at once. <laughs> you can be in a forest city. Where was that sound? Okay, where where do I go? Why why is it? Is, is there that a bear thing, nearby? Is that thing <laughs> dangerous? Is that thing edible? No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> why is everything moving? I'm scared. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, for for us, are kind of scary, but also they're awesome and inspiring as well. So it was a, uh, it was very hard to find that that balance between uh, downright uh, horror, and 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 still natural. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah again. Uh, uh, kudos to to Mary and Joe to find that that right balance of of visually uh, scary but not too much. So yeah, Crescent. So it, it all came down to like how Stella felt about it because yeah. to her it's a place of distress because it's you're, you'll spoil it tomorrow. <laughs> but it's uh, it, it's not a it, like the place itself is not bad. The the place itself probably felt good before that mm. thing That's happened. Right. That's right. So it's it, it's it's a matter of how she visualizes the place while she's in it because you could be anywhere in that that like the if something very negative happens to you in that place that place just kind of gets striked out as well i'm never gonna go back there because i associate too many like bad memories with it and krausen is very much meant to be that that's right was there a specific a place that we use as inspiration for Crozen, or was it mostly just iconography from ideal locations in the forest? Now that I recall, I remember a meeting we had uh, with you, Joe, and, and Marianne, and, and me just saying, you know, like trees and dark trees and tall trees and kind of a, kind of a West Coast feel. Actually, the first uh, iteration of Crow's End was uh, a marsh. That's true. Right. It was uh, it was supposed to feel like gloomy and like not safe, which is what it ended up being. But it's it, it used to be very uh, flat. But yeah. since we had a lot of islands, all of them basically except uh, Furugawa, uh, that were completely flat, we were like, no, we need verticality. So that's when we were like, oh, what about like really steep and dangerous cliffs? And that's where we like, well, yeah, it makes sense because we already have a lot of like jumping abilities. We have like by that by that point, you've unlocked Most pretty much abilities. all the, the 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 upgrades. So yeah. why not go ham and like make it scary but vertical instead of just <laughs> horizontal? Yeah, it was. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I forget about that. That's it's also the fact that it's a uh, the it's the last region we ever made in the game. And uh, we knew what was missing from all the elements that we wanted to display about uh, platforming and, and, and navigation um, skills that you that you've learned through the through the, the shrines. So yeah, it was a, it was like the last thing that would you know help us you know fill in the blanks and complement the rest of the content. That's right. That's really where the the gusts of wind also uh, shine in the game because yeah. that's when you you get to use them the most, I think. Yes. I think there's maybe like one other place I you yeah, get to use them, but in the mines sometimes. And the bouncy yeah. little tents. Yeah, I love the tents. <laughs> a lot of people. Which previously, I think you only could like bounce on a, a trash can. Is that it? Right. True. Yeah, and then we re-added the, um, <laughs> the umbrellas thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can dr like jump on very uh, suspicious <laughs> suspicious thing 
As long as the the, gar the garbage bin is full, you can jump on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's fine. So uh, I see that we are uh, about to run out of time. It's uh, <laughs> two to two, actually one to two now. Uh, so do you all have any closing statement that you'd like to share with the audience, uh, starting with Nick? Well, uh, as we talked about today, I mean, it was it was very special crafting spirit for with uh, such a talented team, and, and uh, yeah, as uh, as we said, you know, the um, everything we tried to 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 craft had meaning. Um, some of the things that people won't even notice uh, had meaning for us. Uh, little graphical elements, little text, little little feature itself, you know, and uh, and and yeah, it's it's. I'm really happy to see uh, it started it started happening after the game was out, but to see all the wikis going out, people trying to connect the dots and understand what was going on with with all this concept of of what of who was who was uh, you know doing what and who was still at with. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's 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 us thinking way too hard about things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's a closing concept. I I think I think like the the most interesting thing for me about like the reception of Spirit Fair is seeing how many people can relate to the characters. Uh, that's one of the things that meant the most to me. Uh, and like we can we can go on and on as you can you have Probably seen tough. now about like on how much we thought about the world and what like meaning we wanted to inject into it. But uh, in in the end, like pe what people make of it is mostly what's important to me so i'm really thankful that people like were were game enough and like just like really enthusiastic enough to be like all right i'm gonna dive in into this and try to find everything to me that's to me that was a, a really fun uh a really fun aspect of the game coming out cool but yeah, yeah thank you thank you guys for for uh, for playing the game that was yeah, uh, well. <laughs> yeah thank i uh, thank all of you for uh, playing the game and being interested in what uh, we have to say and uh thank you all for joining me as well uh, it has been insightful even though i there's a lot of things that i didn't expect to, <laughs> to learn today that was a lot of fun uh so um just so everyone knows, uh, tomorrow we're going to do another uh, discussion where we will go out and explain all of the spoilers regarding Stella's story. So if you have played through the game tomorrow, we'll explain the entire thing for the most part. If you haven't, uh, I do recommend that you probably just wait a bit longer for to watch the, the recap or whatnot. But it's going to start at 1 uh, p.m., uh, EDT as it has today and uh, it has been a lot of fun so I hope uh, you will come back tomorrow otherwise it has been uh, Joe, Nick and me signing off thank you uh, a lot for sharing this moment with me and I hope you will have a wonderful day or evening or morning or whatever so thanks a lot <laughs> whatever and you listen is you. fine yeah pretty much have a good rest of day or night don't forget to uh look up um spirit fair on steam we are on sale right now so do check it out if you haven't already otherwise uh follow us on all social medias as listed below and uh have a good day peace thank you